whether it's snapping pictures of a new family member to share on social media, recording footage to upload for co-workers, or just taking a selfie for fun with the girls, having a night on the town, it cannot be disputed that digital photography has become standard to our modern way of living. And while we take for granted that pretty much anyone can produce a phone that is spilling over with pictures of small humans and animals they adore, have you ever stopped to think what makes all of this possible? Well, even if you didn't, the answer is image sensors, and thanks to them, we are now able to capture high quality photos and videos more directly into a digital format for easy usage, and instead of going through the cumbersome extra steps that we did historically. You see kids, back in the days of the ancient pharaohs, cameras used a specialized light sensitive plastic substance to capture images projected onto it through a lens known as phlegm, excuse me, film. You took a roll of it to the local chemist who developed it and gave you physical pictures which if you wanted to upload to your GeoCities site needed to be scanned in a scanner. Now, instead of using film to capture images, today's digital sensors work hard to artificially mimic the transduction process of a biological eye in order to do all of this in a much more simple fashion. Well, sort of simple. Transduction, simply defined, is the conversion of one energy form into another. And whether this comes as a result of an organic or mechanical means is actually completely irrelevant. So in the human eye, rod and cone receptors work in combination with ganglion cells to convert photons into an electrochemical signal, which the occipital lobe in your brain can then process. In the case of an image sensor, though, photons are captured as charged electrons in silicon and converted to a voltage value through the use of capacitors and amplifiers, then later transferred into digital code, which can be processed by a computer. While there are many ways of going about this, most sensors operate in a similar manner to one another, with the big difference that splits them being the way in which they process stimuli. Of these many types, there are two more readily available and mature forms of sensors, CCD and CMOS. Charge-coupled device sensors work by registering photon rays in silicon, which contains a grid array of pixels. After electron charges are captured in this pixel array, they are then processed from the bottom to the top of the grid into a serial shift register and pushed out a single charge at a time to be converted into an analog voltage that is then transformed into coding by way of an analog to digital converter. Since these sensors operate by processing charges individually across the lines of an array, this system utilizes a respectable amount of power to function, but this also gives it the benefit of being extremely low noise due to the minimized use of voltage amplifiers, often making them better for particular types of photography such as aerial or space. This of course brings us to complementary metal oxide semiconductors, which are the type of image sensor most commonly found in consumer grade products. As I stated earlier, most image sensors operate in a generally similar fashion, so what makes these different from the CCD sensors just described is that instead of shuffling electron charges along an array to then be modified, extra circuitry has been added to each pixel which allows it to do more or less all of the processing individually, with the signal then being sent directly down the line to the CPU. Since there's no gridlock to be managed in this operation, the power usage is actually reduced simultaneously with the added benefit of an increase in processing speed. Now, while both of these sensor types have done well and continue to develop in their own sort of respective specialized fields, that's not to say that there isn't any room for future improvements. Though modern sensors have been wise in taking their inspiration from biology, the processors which reconstruct the coded images sent to them have a ways to catch up if if they want to uh, give our brains a run for their money. I mean, you see, the current answer to improving image quality in electronics is to increase pixel counts and fine-tune photoresensor sensitivities, when the fact is that the eye that we use to sit in judgment of all this stuff is correctly focused in a whopping 2% of our visual field, or about twice the size of your thumbnail at arm's reach, meaning our brain is doing a lot of the work at picking up the slack. But unless we want to resort to carrying around Xerox machines with us whenever we wish to share our important images, then they'll just have to serve us in the meantime. Speaking of important images, if you want to create a site to host your important images of your family or your business or whatever else, you should check out Squarespace. Their templates are simple, it's powerful to manage, they're absolutely beautiful looking, you can end up with a great looking site without a whole lot of technical know-how. They've got 24-7 support, 
support via live chat and email. It's only eight bucks a month and you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for a year. And they've got their whole responsive design concept going on. So when you pick out a template, instead of just looking great on just a phone or looking great on just a computer, they scale intelligently according to the size of the screen that your viewer is viewing it with, which is great because who knows how important the traffic coming to your site might be. They've got a commerce module so you can put a store on your site. You don't want to miss out on a customer because they go and they you know, see something great when they're browsing on their laptop. They go and they check it out on their phone and they can't even figure out how to check out. Oh, that kind of thing is a real problem. You can start with a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. You get two weeks and when and if you decide to sign up for Squarespace permanently, you can use offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Fast As Possible. Thanks to you guys for watching it. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked, and leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast As Possibles just like this one. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.